anxiety pulls your attention away from everything else toward itself. By learning how to manage your anxiety, you can free up your attention to focus on the things that you truly want in life. I am delighted to partner with Porsche at the next InGoop Health Summit. I'm Dr. Srini Pillay, and this is The Drive Series. In this workshop, we will be discussing how you can target your brain to reduce anxiety, and in the process, enhance your creativity too. If you experience anxiety, you are not alone. 7.3% of the global population experiences an anxiety disorder. One in 14 people will have an anxiety disorder at any given point in time, and one in nine people will develop an anxiety disorder in any given year. When we talk about anxiety, we're not just talking about conscious anxiety, where your heart races or you're sweating or trembling. Anxiety can also be unconscious. The only way in which you can detect unconscious anxiety is when it disrupts your thinking, decision-making, and creativity. That's because in the brain, the anxiety center is connected to the thinking brain. And when there's a disruption in the anxiety center, this disrupts your thinking as well. In my book, Tinker Dabble Doodle Try, I talk about one particular method called Circa that will help you reduce your anxiety. I once worked with a 25-year-old woman who was experiencing severe anxiety. Every morning when she would get up out of bed, she would feel like her heart was racing, even though she was taking medications and she was in therapy. So we talked about other ways in which she could help herself. And so she decided to use Circa. Circa is a mnemonic that stands for five different things. The C is for chunking. The I is for ignore mental chatter. The R is for reality check. The second C is for control check. And the A is for attention shift. Let's go through each of these different steps. Chunking refers to breaking things down into their component parts or spreading things out over time. You know those days when you get up in the morning and you're suddenly thinking, I've got so much on my plate and I don't know what to do? That's when you start chunking. Now, if after chunking, you feel like you still have a lot on your plate, then try ruthlessly prioritizing. That too is a form of chunking that will help you. Ignore mental chatter is all about mindfulness. And the way to practice this is like this. Sit back in your chair, close your eyes, and place your attention on your breath like a flashlight. Ignore whatever mental chatter is going on around you. Simply pay attention to each inspiration and exhalation. If you find that your mind is wandering, gently bring the flashlight back to your breath and pay attention to each inhale and exhale. Now this may sound perfunctory or silly, but the reality is that many studies have shown that mindfulness meditation can actually decrease amygdala activation and protect your genes too. Preliminary studies have shown that the tips of chromosomes are protected so that you may even live longer. Reality check is all about what you do when your brain starts catastrophizing things. It's a form of self-talk in which you say things like, this too shall pass. When you use this form of self-talk, it relaxes your brain and all of the associated structures that are making your anxiety worse. Control check is equivalent to the serenity prayer. Identifying things that you can control, knowing the things that you cannot control, and also understanding the difference. So many of us get up in the morning and watch the news, and there are so many things that are distressing, but many of these things we can't actually control. What I would recommend is use your brain's attentional units wisely. Tell yourself, Perhaps I should only include things that I can control in my thought process. One good place to start is to ask yourself, am I perhaps saying yes to too many things? In the course of a day, a lot of us are on autopilot, and when people ask us to do things, we say, yes, I'll do that, yes, I'll do that. The reality is that if you learn how to say no, this will help you feel less overwhelmed, and it will also help you understand how you can feel like you have a greater sense of integrity. The A stands for attentional shift. An attentional shift simply means shifting your attention from the problem to the solution. 
So often, we get mired in problems in our day-to-day -day lives, and all we talk about are those problems. If we remind ourselves to shift our attention from the problem to the solution, this can be much more helpful. Now, a lot of people say they don't know what a solution is. And when you don't know what a solution is, what you do is go inward toward imagination. Imagine what a solution might be. Because every time you give your brain data about what a solution might be, it behaves like a GPS and starts to create a particular direction toward that solution. Eventually, the solution may become clearer. Circa can be really helpful in the work setting as well. I once worked with a company that was doing performance reviews, and what they found was that people were very anxious when they'd come to performance reviews. So as a favor, they would start all performance reviews with Circa. They would say, we know that you have the greatest potential, we know that there are some things that you're doing really beautifully, and we also know that there are some things where you could do better. But in order to really fully take this in, we're gonna teach you something that we actually were taught. It's called Circa, and this is how it goes. And they would walk people through these five steps, and people actually felt that they understood that at these moments when these performance reviews were going on, that this company had a culture of caring. That's a lot of information that I just shared. So how do you get started, and how do you think about this? The first major thing that I would really like you to remember is that anxiety is not just something you deal with. Anxiety impacts your brain and it impacts the rest of your body too. So being active about this can be really helpful. The second thing is to remember that your brain can change, called neuroplasticity. This is something that you can impact by performing tasks that are included in Circa. The third thing is decide when you want to do Circa. Do you want to do it daily? Do you want to do it weekly, monthly, or only in emergencies? The fourth thing is remember that there is a Circa app that can help support you through this process. And finally, remember that Circa can be done with individuals and groups as well. So you can practice Circa with yourself and your family too. At the beginning of this, I told you that anxiety is not just about sweating, trembling, and feeling out of sorts. It also impacts the thinking brain as well. This includes creativity. And that's why I'm delighted that on November 7th, I will be teaching you many more techniques at the next Ingoop Health Summit at the Porsche Experience Center, and I look forward to seeing you there.